Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is Britt Murike. Welcome, Britt. Hi. Hello. Nice to be here. Fantastic Hi. Be here. So, tell us a bit about you and your work. Uh, well, I'm a, a topography teacher at the Willem de Koning Academy in Rotterdam in Holland. Uh, I've been doing that for quite some years and I've also left the system for a couple of years because of other reasons, but uh, I'm back and the whole system at the academy really changed. Maybe I can talk about that later a bit, but uh, uh, so that's, uh, I work there part time and um, um, uh, the other time I work as a, a individual teacher, like private teacher for people who want to know more about topography type or calligraphy and they actually exist. You know, I, I thought that, uh, um, yeah, it's such a limited world, the topography world, but uh, I've had some students on a private base that were just great. And I was amazed by uh, what, uh, yeah, how, how they are interested in it. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what I do. I also try to, you know, uh, since, um, I started out as a um, graphic designer. I studied in The Hague at the Royal Academy. I also did the master there in type media, which is all about uh, type design. Um, but um, after the academy, I started, like a lot of people do, uh, work in, uh, independently. But um, then someone asked me, would you like to teach? And I thought, yeah, let's do that. And from that moment, I've been really um, a teacher. And this combination, I think a lot of people can relate to that, is quite hard to uh, uh, yeah, maintain because you're, uh, you know, your teaching job, is, if you take it seriously, it can take the whole week. And then you have to find a balance between your uh, independent work and the teaching. So finally, after all those years, I, I decided to combine those. So um, whatever uh, projects I do for myself, because I also need to create, um, they are always in the um, uh, light of education and how I can uh, help the students with whatever I experience. Brilliant, brilliant. So what, what are the latest projects you're, you're working on now? Uh, well, you know, uh, I also decided to really divide topography, type, and calligraphy because they are totally different worlds and uh, so and I cannot miss one of them so I started out uh, when I was 13 doing calligraphy I studied the book of Edward Johnston which is a very famous calligrapher of course and from there on it went on so I'm doing all these three things so within calligraphy I focus on the scripts that are really unknown uh, that are forgotten like um, Zutterlin or the, the German scripts that have this bad connotation with it, but they're actually beautiful or some undervalued uh, school scripts. Um, so that is my interest because I, um, uh, and within type, I make now uh, a typeface that explains the italic uh, construction to students. So uh, to improve their handwriting and, um, with the typography, it's more about the theoretical part because I think that, uh, yeah, my vision on typography is maybe a little bit different than uh, a lot of people think it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what it, my aim is that I write about typography. Mm -hmm. Tell us in what way these three things are different. What, 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 is, what are the differences between them? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Um, uh, if you have to explain that on a, a very technical, theoretical base, maybe that's not so interesting. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, cool. You know, we're a practical level. Yeah, it's... Uh, um, uh, well, uh, I always teach uh, calligraphy uh, with the um, um, idea behind it that it's to understand the letter shapes. So it's like a preparation for type design uh, because the world of calligraphy by itself... Uh, they have this uh, aesthetics that I don't really like. I think it's very skillful and very beautiful what they do, but uh, my approach is just a bit different to um, uh, understand and to feel what is going on in a letter. It sounds a bit spiritual, but mm -hmm. I need that step to um, uh, understand the letters. And then with type design, um, 
I know a lot of type designers and I really respect them. Um, I only notice that, you know, these are people who are zoomed in the whole day at 2000% in their computer. And that is, I, uh, sometimes I miss a bit in their attitude that uh, it's, it's really focused like this and they cannot uh, broaden their view on the things. And within typography, of course, typography uses uh, the type and um, there's a whole different world to that, like how are you going to use it? So that's more related uh, to the graphic design uh, field. So it's, it's about zooming out and to connect them on different levels um, 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 yeah, when it comes to the practical level. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's interesting. So uh, talk to us about your journey into teaching. Um, yes, well, um, I started in, uh, my God, in 2007, I think. Uh, it was just one class of one and a half hours of topography. And, uh, well, I was working at the Willem de Koning uh, for half a year, I think. And then the position uh, uh, came open from the head of the design uh, department, graphic design. So, And they asked me if I would like to do that. And I was a bit uh, surprised because I thought, what? Uh, of course, I would like to do that. So I did that for four years. And in those four years, I learned a lot about uh, education itself and also uh, how this big institute like Art Academy actually works. And um, um, yeah, I got my degree for teaching at a higher education. And um, uh, so, but uh, in general, um, you know, teaching topography is, is a, uh, I think, a field of its own because um it is uh, the word you know most people think that topography is 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 a bit boring or very strict and you have all these rules and then they don't know the rules so they feel totally you know they don't know what to do and uh, so they just leave it and uh well i think that um uh, really uh it's for everyone and I think it's important for everyone, but I want to show the students that there's not just one way how to deal with, the, uh, with typography, that they can all find their own way. And usually that I, I succeed in that, also the students that are really stubborn in the beginning. Uh, so that's my, my, really my goal to, to make everyone comfortable within the field of typography because yeah, to me there's nothing more interesting of course. So I really want to share that. Mm. You mentioned you mentioned you're working on, on, on a book, or you're you're working on a book. You mentioned earlier on. Well, I'm uh, no, I'm not working on a book. But when I uh, uh, deal with typography, I read a lot of different books, and in some way, I uh, always manage to uh, find really weird ones. Um, um, yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of books and uh, I'm always open to new perspectives. So, um, uh, and I'm, I'm writing about that more on the social media and also on my website to expand the view. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite book? My goodness. Um... Let me just uh, get it because it's just behind me. Of course. Um, so this this book I bought a yes. uh, year ago, and I bought it in Berlin. I'm often in Berlin, and uh, there's this bookshop. Uh, they have all. It's just a beautiful bookshop. But uh, um, I found this, and I thought, what is that? And it's about a topography in a different context. And I started reading this and then I noticed because it looks so modern, uh, it's from, actually it's from the 60s. Yeah. So I was a bit surprised like, oh, what is that? So uh, this is my latest book. And uh, I also have a book now that I just did a project uh, about with the students last week. It's called uh, Page One, Great Expectations. Um, by Charles Dickens, so, uh, and that book is very, very useful for education because it shows the students how they can relate to typography. So, yeah, it's, it's always, I don't have one particular book, but in general, I think the books are always a bit from the different uh, direction than you would usually uh, expect. 
Yeah, you're lucky. They get that Gerster book used to be very rare and, until it got reprinted. So it's, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that is that is the thing that I see that book. I think, what is that? And I buy it. And then I found out how special it actually is. So I don't know what that is. But uh, yeah, so. You mentioned uh, the Kooning Academy changed, you said earlier on. Yeah. The discussion. Like, could you tell yeah. us about that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, it, it was a, a bigger uh, uh, question from the government in Holland uh, some years ago that we're such a small country and we have, I don't know how many art academies. So the government asked us to profile ourselves more. So it would be um, uh, uh, valid that we actually exist so that we don't look alike each other. And in that process, all the academies really stood up and showed their profile. So uh, that happened to a lot of academies, but um, with Willem de Koning, it um, resulted in a totally different education system. So um, we also had a new dean, or we have a new dean who had uh, other ideas, and uh, we implemented them uh, through the system of uh, project-based um, uh, education. So instead of having the schedule for the students, like, okay, Monday morning I have drawing, uh, then I have programming, uh, it was, it's more about one project that is uh, uh, like the, the main project, and all the different teachers contribute uh, to that from their own expertise. So that's the idea. And with that idea, the, um, our academy was rebuilt extremely uh, so we, um, I, I, I remember I came back after summer holidays. I didn't know even where I was in the building. It changed a lot. And it was, it's really impressive how they, um, because the workshops, now we don't call them workshops anymore. So the traditional workshops like metal or wood or um, we expanded those and we called them stations. So from that, uh, I work currently in the publication station, which uh, deals with all the uh, publications uh, for the students. So that is either in print or digital. Mm -hmm. um, so these stations are also really important in the educational system uh, in Rotterdam. And next to that is the project-based uh, system. So uh, yeah, there's a lot more to it, but uh, uh, sometimes it, it feels a bit, uh, complicated to explain everything but that is like the, the base well it sounds like a very positive change because because in the older art school and in the system where i was educated uh, there was only studio practice and everything plugged into studio practice really so you had to, to learn things yeah but it was about studio practice because modularization also segments knowledge in the students minds yeah uh, and it's not it's not so practical for for visual communication Graphics. No, 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 no. And, and one very uh, important thing added to that is that um, uh, now I get more complicated, but I will try to keep it simple. So if you apply for, for instance, graphic design at the academy, you start within the department of graphic design. And after two uh, uh, years, you have to connect a profile to that. So we have uh, social practices, autonomous practices and commercial practices, which is more like an approach to the field. So there you can combine, for instance, graphic design in the context of social design. And uh, that is, uh, so our academy is uh, really for people who are more trained to be uh, generalist and then also to uh, find their own way. That's also uh, really important at the moment in Holland to have this individual approach for studying. And we at the academy, um, yeah, uh, make that happen through their really individual uh, process during the years. So yeah, they, um, it's because, yeah, the, the thing with art, you know, it's, it's uh, they question like, what is graphic design? What is illustration? What is advertising? And of course they're overlapping. And within this new system, um, I see students that were, uh, sometimes a bit lost in their own department. For instance, if they would study photography, but they also had the, the, um, um, yeah, the, the passion for graphic design that was not negotiable. So they, they had to stay within photography, but now it's easier for them 
to also go to graphic design and to really follow their own path. So that that is uh, uh, that is I think really positive, especially nowadays. Sometimes, yeah, it also has a bit of a downside, of course, because um, um, the if you it also asks a lot of the students. So within the system, they go um, they go choose whatever they think is interesting to them, which is a good thing. But if they don't have to do certain things anymore, so for instance, with the typography, they uh, can uh, they don't have to do that if they're not interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that also has the results. And I mean, uh, probably we all know that sometimes at art school you had to do things you hated, but still, after the lessons, you thought, well, maybe that's interesting actually. And that's also what I saw happening with a lot of students that um, with typography they hated it in the beginning, and then you know when the when you teach them they think, oh wow. So uh, sometimes I miss that a bit. Um, but we're working on that. It's still really in process because it's it's rather new still yeah. the whole system. Yeah. Yeah. So if there was no limitation, uh, yeah, saying all these, uh, would you change something or would you add something to the system of education if you if, if there was if you just a blank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh, you know there seems to be this argument within art education that you have the concept, which is very very important in Holland. And you have the knowledge. And if you, um, there seems to be this division within the teachers that you're either for knowledge or you're for concept and they don't uh, um, um, go together. And that is, um, um, I'm, I'm, I consider myself to be more in the knowledge uh, area, but so that also puts me in a position that I don't want to be because uh, if you, talk about knowledge it looks like you're traditional and conservative which is no totally not the the uh, yeah the case of course and that is something i would like to change also especially for the students that they really learn things and uh, by expanding their references because in the end knowledge is just you know uh, having the right references uh, that they can um, um yeah, underpin their design decisions more in the concept. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I talk uh, often a lot to students that um, if they have to present their concept, they say, uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing something like this. And then you have this weird drawing. Uh, to me, that's not a concept, you know? So that's, you know, how to uh, actually develop a concept is uh, knowledge in itself. So I, I would like to focus more on that. And I think it's also, that's uh, why I work in the publication station. So, uh, because that's all about the knowledge and skills. So we are uh, adding to the departments uh, with our expertise. Yeah, I mean, the... Um... Uh, although in in some uh, er, in some some schools uh, there is more emphasis on the knowledge and the research, and uh, it seems to be that that covers about a third, mm -hmm. uh, because you have uh, the imagination, the ideas, and the outcome. In all art schools, we are looking at these three areas. So yeah. these three areas have to be in, in, in a balance. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Now we need almost go more into more into practice and into doing. Yeah. Uh, instead of the th what you said about thinking about doing, it's very different to doing. So. Yeah, 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 and it's also you know sometimes I have the students in the in the workshop they they come to work with the Riso printer or something and then they said oh I, I just I'm, I'm done with the theory and the research I just want to make something so uh, and and then I'm always happy to see those people because uh, yeah it's exactly what you say finding the right balance and I think the balance is not there. Uh, at this moment. Mm, mm, mm. So, uh, what is your opinion about uh, professionalism and, and helping aspiring students and graduates uh, into into a better way of getting into into design uh, professionally? Um, well, uh, at the moment, I'm uh, I'm also connected to the alphabetus. I don't know if you know it, but it's the um, uh, like the female uh, group of type designers, um, which was founded a few years ago. And I uh, complimented the founder. I said, the, oh, that's so good that you do this because it, it was really like a male dominated world. 
And she said, uh, well, thank you, but it's also a, a bit of a critical um, uh, part that we have to do this. But in the years, it grew really to a big uh, a community uh, where they also offer mentorship. Uh, so what they do is they connect uh, professionals to uh, people who want to know more about a type. And now I'm teaching a student from India who's, uh, who applied for the master here in The Hague. Uh, she will come here next year. And her uh, question was partly to be more comfortable about what to expect because she's a little bit nervous. Uh, but um, uh, also she wanted to know about the world, what it's like to work in that field. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's always, I think that, um, you know, I'm, 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 I, my main um, uh, experience is in the arts education in Holland, of course. So um, what we deal with here is the connection between arts academies, which sometimes look like a bubble, and then the real life. I noticed that if you talk about it with students, they, they think, oh, come on, I don't want to hear this because it's boring. And, uh, but it's the reality, you know, that, that if they finish the arts academy, they have to find their way. And uh, I think in Rotterdam, we're doing quite a good job in that because we also uh, uh, prepare the students for that. Uh, still, it's a big shock. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's not only our job, but also the students' job themselves to, uh, to be aware of what it is that they're getting into. So, like the student that I'm guiding now from India, she was already aware of that. And so I'm trying to help her to uh, tell what, it's, what this world is like. Brilliant. How can our viewers and listeners find you? Uh, well, I have my uh, website, which is uh, www. Oh, it's it's uh, www.britmurike.com. Uh, that's where I write uh, about uh, all the things that uh, I experienced during topography class. So I share the stories, I share my knowledge, I share references. Uh, because that is, uh, you know, usually the problem with the students that they cannot find uh, the right references. So if they, uh, like the idea at the academy now is, okay, if you want to know something, you just go look for it yourself. So, and then they start browsing the internet and they, they see this, yeah, they often come up with the wrong thing. So I'm focusing on that. And on, uh, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm also writing about my ideas about the education within topography and um, yeah, so that's what I do. Fantastic, fantastic. Any last uh, words of advice you'd like to leave us with? Um, well, I think that um, the, uh, you know, education is a world that is always changing. That's why I love it so much. We're always, we're also really hard workers to change the things. And um, um, I think we should, you know, the, the, the quote on the uh, Willem de Koning uh, Academy is by Willem de Koning himself. And he said, I have to change to stay the same. So that is uh, a really, really important. That's very beautiful. Thank you so much. For You're welcome. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You too.